So, you want to save the world with clean energy? Make money doing it? Confused about the economic and technical realities of residential and commercial solar, batteries, heat pumps, EVs? Want the real world scoop on new energy technologies, not manufacture hype? Then tune in to the Weekly Energy Show, hosted by Barry Cinnamon. Insights from Barry's 40 plus years in the solar and energy industry will help you understand the future ways we'll generate and consume energy. And now, here's Barry. Welcome to this week's Energy Show. Now, unless you live in an off-grid cabin somewhere, you're probably aware that there are power shortages in California. It's from hotter weather. It's from more people working at home. It's we're retiring dirty power plants. We have fires. You know, basically, in a nutshell, the utilities aren't keeping up with the state's power demands. And there's two solutions. One solution is more power, more solar, more battery storage, both by utilities and customers. And the other solution is lowering the power demands during peak periods. Now, there's tremendous capacity for businesses and homeowners to reduce their power demands. This is something that we in the industry call demand response. But there's two challenges. One is how you communicate to the customers that they should cut back during these peak times. And second, how to compensate the customers and the utilities for customers doing the right thing. And generally, it's required a lot of hardware and software. It's complicated and it's all been done on the business side. But Ohm Connect, has a better way for customers to participate in this demand response without expensive equipment and metering. Their approach is to use your existing internet-connected thermostat and smart plugs in conjunction with data that they can get from your smart meters. And that provides these demand response benefits to the grid. Customers get paid, utilities benefit, and it works. I, I call it demand response without the mess. It's my pleasure to welcome Cisco DeVries, CEO of Ohm Connect, on this week's show. Cisco's a legend in the energy industry. He transformed solar financing when he pioneered property assessed clean energy or PACE financing programs. That was like 10 years ago or so. Now he's transforming demand response with Ohm Connect. So welcome to the show, Cisco. Oh my gosh. A le- Barry, you called me a legend. My day has been made. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put that on my epitaph now. So thank you so much. Well, you're too young to think about an epitaph. You're a, le- a young <laughs> well, legend. Well, but there it is. I've, I've hit it. I've hit the pinnacle. But thank you very much for that introduction. It's such a pleasure to be chatting with you. All right, good, good. Well, you know, fascinating to see that you're involved with Ohm Connect. I've been interested in it. I've signed up for it. But uh, tell us a bit more about how Ohm Connect works. Sure. Well, the introduction you gave is such a helpful primer for people because mostly what we find is that people can't believe what we're telling them is true. We say to folks, look, save energy and get paid. Save energy, you don't just reduce your energy bill, but we actually pay you in money or gift cards and other rewards. And the way that we do that is get our customers, in this case all around California, to join together with us. We let them know when it's a key time for the grid and there's not enough energy available or particularly energy power has become very expensive. We say, look, if you reduce your energy right now, we'll pay you. And that will keep us from having to turn a power plant on somewhere on the grid that would otherwise have made up for the shortfall that we have. So it's a way for all of us to act in a concerted way together to reduce demand. And that really allows us to avoid turning on old, dirty fossil fuel power plants. The way that we pay people is simply we collect the money that would have been paid to turn on that power plant, to burn the natural gas or whatever it is for that power plant to run. And instead, we get paid that same money, and we turn around and pay most of that to our customers so that they benefit directly and are paid directly for the energy they save along the way. So it's a really nice way of completing a circle, giving people clear information about when to save and giving them a financial incentive to do it as well. So how does it work? It seems like there's three parties involved. There's homeowners who save money, and they save twice, as you pointed out. They save because they're using less energy, it costs them less money, and then they get paid for those savings. And then you've got the utilities, and then some technology, some magical technology that you guys have developed. So what are the pieces that are involved? What kind of hardware are you leveraging? Right. So this really starts off with the customer and their smart meter. So one of the great 
investments we made in California, you know, over the last 15 years was rolling out smart meters to people's homes. And mostly, I don't think people saw much benefit from that, right? There was a lot of sort of hullabaloo about it when it was happening, but clearly it hasn't changed that much for customers mostly. But that piece of technology that allows us to see how much energy is being used by the home in relatively minute increments, that is the first piece of technology that really matters, Joe. That is a key enabling effect. The second are the devices and the things we control in the home. So obviously that gets to what are the things that we can turn off or on that we can change the setting on in the home automatically for the customer so we can reduce their load even if they aren't home or even if they're not paying attention and and haven't thought about it. So that tends to be the smart thermostats, but also we do a lot of work with smart plugs. We have 20, 30,000 devices that are just regular things like wall air conditioners or refrigerators that people plug into one of our smart plugs. And all it does is allow us to control that device remotely. So it turns almost anything that you plugs into the wall into a smart device. So that's really been critical as well. And increasingly, we see more folks with car chargers that we can control, as well as battery storage and other you know, hot water heaters and other things. So those devices in the home are really important. The last is Home Connect. And the really amazing technology that we have to control all of that in close to real time, to be able to sort of get, reach out and communicate with devices and with customers, with the utilities and the grid managers and Kaiso and everybody else, put all the pieces together and put it together in a way that's fun and easy for customers. They're kind of playing a game and at the end of the day, get them paid. And that technology there, I think, has been the hardest to develop and is the one that was really needed to glue all the other pieces together. So you mentioned Ohm Connect, but on your website, you also talk about something called an Ohm Hour. How does that work? What is that? You know, we really searched hard for what to call it when we need you to save, right? So when is the moment when we say, hey, Barry, it's eight o'clock at night on a Thursday and it's the grid is really expensive and dirty right now. Let's reduce the amount of energy we put onto the grid that we are demanding from the grid. And, and that'll be great environmentally and economically. What do we call that? So we started calling it some years ago, the Ohm Hour. And it's really the cornerstone. There's lots of other variations. We can do things in 15 minute increments, go longer, do devices, you've noticed, but at its core is we ask people to reduce their energy use about once a week on average across the year for an hour. We call it an ohm hour. We give you 24 hours notice that we'd like you to save. We give you another notice 10 minutes ahead. And then when the hour comes, we ask you to reduce your energy use voluntarily using your behavior, putting off the load of laundry or changing other settings in your house. But also that's when we'll take control of the devices in your home and and turn things off for you, like your refrigerator for an hour. So that hour is really the way in which people start to understand the commitment they're making to reducing about an hour a week and how much they can get paid. Oh, I can get paid $10 for this hour or something else. So that it really starts to make sense to people as an appropriate block of time and enough money to be worth the trouble. That sounds really, really cool. So you're connecting to all these devices and you don't automatically take control of them until there's some kind of permission granted. Do you send people an email or is it an alert on their cell phone? How does that work? Oh, that's such a great question because, you know, one of the biggest Google searches for Ohm Connect, it was number one for a while. I'm not sure if it still is. It's something along the lines of, is Ohm Connect a scam? People don't believe this is real, right? Like I'm getting paid to just not use certain things in my house right now. Wow. It's even harder to get people to trust to let us control like your refrigerator. We love controlling refrigerators because they use a lot of energy. It doesn't matter to your food if they're off for an hour or two. And it's quiet. It happens without you even noticing it. But it takes time still today, even though we've grown to 150,000 customers across the state. People still take time to, to trust us with that. So right. So it starts off, you can start off with just behavior. You don't even have to give us a device on day one. You can say, look, try us out, 
do a couple of ohm hours and understand how it works, just acting on your own will give you notice. And as you see that this is real, that it works, and that we're really good at it, people then can upgrade if they want to give it a little extra couple of weeks. They can then wait to upgrade and then put on a control on their refrigerator or their thermostat. And that's when they give us control. They affirmatively let us do it. They can take away that control any time. And they can override it if it's an inconvenient moment for us to take control of their device in that time as well. So the customer always remains in control. They have to trust us, and we have to earn that trust every time we do an event. So that's why we're, we've are we spent so many years perfecting our technology and our process to make sure that our users are having a good experience and they can trust us from start to finish. I'm afraid of the control of the refrigerator because my wife's always trying to take control of the freezer because she doesn't want me to eat that Cherry Garcia or fish food ice cream. <laughs> but I'll trust you guys to control the refrigerator and freezer. So, you know, I'm, I'm signed up and I'm going to get this thing going. All right. So how do people sign up? And do you encounter resistance? Oh, sorry, that was an electrical joke. <laughs> yeah, the ohm hour, the, <laughs> the, yeah, the measure of resistance. Yes. So signing up is really easy. If you live in California today and you are, you pay a bill to one of the utilities, PG&E, Southern California Edison, et cetera, almost every person in that category can sign up with us. You go online to ownconnect.com. It takes about a minute. It's pretty fast. You do need to know your utility account number and we'll ask you to log in through there and give us permission to see your meter data. But after that, you're up and running. It's pretty fast. And you know, sometimes it takes a few days for the utility process on the other side to complete. But this is not a lot of work. Once you're signed up, we'll get you to take a smart plug or something from us. And that only takes a couple of minutes to install as well. So really, people find it surprisingly easy. And almost you know, within a week or two, you've made a little money. I would say that you know the resistance, obviously, <laughs> is there. As you were saying, people mostly want to be sure that it's real and they can trust us. That's the big resistance. And we've done a lot to overcome that, but there's still a lot of education to be done. And, you know, once people are up and running, how much can they typically earn in addition to the energy savings? Yeah, I mean, we do see that on average, people who sign up for Home Connect end up saving 3 to 5% or on their energy bill. So that's more energy reduction than we would expect from the ohm hours alone. And I think that's because you become a little more aware, just kind of almost without thinking about it, you become more aware of what's using energy in your house once you participate in Ohm Connect. But in addition to that, we do pay. It really depends on how you participate. For folks that participate every time are pretty consistent and you know, are able to get good reductions, 50% or so reductions on their energy bill, on their energy use for that hour each time, they're going to make $100, $200 plus a year. Some folks are making many hundreds of dollars, or even we have some folks that make in the thousands of dollars a year. But if you don't pay much attention and only occasionally participate or never give us control of a device and only every now and then participate, yeah, you're, you're probably going to make a few bucks. It's not a lot of money for you. But for those that actually do the work or give us control of the device and just let us run with that, it turns out to be a not you know a reasonable amount of money. And for a lot of people in our state today, you know, an extra couple hundred dollars over the course of the summer is, is really important. It's very useful. For yeah, them. yeah. I'm and, glad to provide that. And it sounds like you don't need to make a big investment like solar or storage. You can just buy a few plugs or just participate voluntarily. It's kind of a democratic. It, it works for everyone. I love that you use that term, Barry. That's absolutely right. You can be a renter. You can be a homeowner. You can be passing through and be living here for a few months, any of those, and you can still make use of Ohm Connect. We definitely find that the majority of our new users these days are folks that haven't, you know, they aren't the first adopters. They aren't the people with a Tesla in the driveway and a solar system on the roof. That has not been their clean technology, clean energy experience thus far. Many of our customers, we provide them the first smart device that they've really ever had outside of their phone when we give them a plug or a thermostat. So 
a lot of first adopters, early adopters, people like you and me came on early and made all this possible, helped us figure this out. And that's made it simple and easy and lucrative enough that a lot of other people who aren't sophisticated about energy can participate and make some money. And that's been really fun to see. It's a really different set of customers now that come in that are participating than I've seen in any of my previous clean energy work. All right. So I understand the customer side. Second, but how about utilities? Why do utilities care about this approach? Wouldn't they rather just make or buy more power or build more power plants? You know, traditionally, a utility would absolutely rather build a power plant and operate it or build a battery system and operate it or anything they could build and rate base sounds good to utility generally. And, you know, to be honest, it has not always been an easy conversation with utilities to understand uh, how we can be helpful to what they're doing rather than scary to them in some way. And that process of discussion and engagement has taken a lot of years and still ongoing. So this is still new for utilities. They're still struggling with the changes that have taken place over the last decade or so. That said, from a utilities perspective, from the perspective of the electricity grid, we just need supply and demand to be matched up at all times, right? That's the thing about electricity is it just has to be perfectly balanced on the grid And the grid, and to some degree now, the utilities don't really care whether that comes from reducing the amount of demand at a time or increasing the amount of supply at a time. We just need them to be equal. They're willing to pay for both. And federal regulations and state regulations now require that utilities and wholesale markets look at demand reductions like OwnConnect does and pay for those kilowatt hours reduced at exactly the same level, at exactly the same dollar amount that they would pay a natural gas plant to turn on and run. So it's becoming easier because we look more and more to a utility like a power plant, like a real power plant that they can contract with. We're going to deliver many megawatts whenever they need it. It's reliable and it's persistent and it's consistent. And that, I think, has really started to change our ability to deliver reliable power consistently to the grid has really begun to change the conversations with utilities to being a lot more amenable to this approach. Yeah, it's also a gradual change of the utility business model. They're kind of getting a drag kicking and screaming into the 21st century where they've got to have reliable, inexpensive power and make it a little bit more democratic. But it's just all music to my ears. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, we just launched nationwide in Australia in June, and we did it in a partnership with the largest retail energy provider there, Origin Energy. And that's our first big like partnership inside of a utility infrastructure, an incumbent provider. And I think you know Australia is a little ahead of us as far as this changeover to a new type of energy market and electricity system. And I think we'll, within the next few years, see the same kind of engagement here. But today, we really look in California, like not like a utility program as much as we look to the grid, like, like we're an independent power plant. And in, in Australia now, we are really integrated in a partnership with Origin Energy. And those are the same technology, the same approach, but just Australia being a little further along on the curve of learning how to incorporate customers and demand into their system. All right. So talking about technologies, I'm I'm always really interested in what customers deploy in their house. And we talked about smart thermostats and these smart plugs. You know, I have a Nest thermostat that's working through Wi-Fi. So you're able to tap into that Nest thermostat and control it in some way. And then with the smart plugs, do they also work via Wi-Fi with some kind of IP address on each one? Yeah. So after a lot of testing, we have found uh, certain smart plugs and devices we like a lot better than others that are reliable and consistent enough for us. And generally, these do connect in through your home Wi-Fi. So it's not a big, new, complicated net that we need to put in place. We just connect you through the internet. Then we can control it. And you can see it in the app and control how we're using it and when we're using it and everything else pretty easily. 
So we actually integrate with 22 different types of devices and manufacturers. So we, we integrate with a lot of different things. And those do range from, you know, heat pump, hot water heaters, all the way through to car chargers and smart plugs. It's a real menagerie of things. But it's obviously changing even as we speak more and more devices, appliances, equipment in the home is coming kind of enabled for this type of control. I mean, I think the writing's on the wall that the smart grid and the distributed grid is is happening. And so California law has been evolving in this direction and we see manufacturers moving in this direction as well. So we have great partnerships with Google. We control many thousands of Google devices and Nest and Google Home Minis and lots of other things. And that's been an important way in, but it's not just Google any longer. There really is a burgeoning industry and approach to this that's enabling a lot more devices to come online. Yeah. I mean, there's an app for everything. You know, speaking of everything and apps, I've got this battery hanging on the side of my wall in my <laughs> house and I use it, you know, in conjunction with my solar system. How do you envision controlling a solar or a battery that's got that energy that can be dispatched whenever the grid needs it? You know, we control today about a hundred sort of nano grids that are mostly people's homes where there is storage and solar and we have control over at least some of the devices and appliances in their home. And it's really fun because this is a window into the future about, you know, sort of what the future grid is going to look like, we hope. But it is also really lucrative for somebody like you that has these batteries sitting there that you know, we can put to use a little bit that help the grid and, and earn you some money. So this is kind of how it works and where we're headed. So imagine that, you know, we know that we're headed to a, a high peak energy day, which means we're going to, in California, we're going to see seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. We're going to have shortage of power as the sun goes down. That's what we saw during the flex alert with all of the rolling power outages in August and the flex alerts in September as well. What we can do then is when the sun's shining and the power's coming off the solar, we can make sure all the battery is charged up. We can make sure your hot water heater is fully heated, et cetera. Make sure your house, if you have air conditioning, is cooled. And then when we get into the demand reduction period, our ohm hour later in the day or in the evening, what we do is we turn off unessential devices. We allow the temperature to drift up a little further in your thermostat. And we run everything that needs to be run off of your battery. So long term, this is just a great way for us to take a lot of load off of the grid without a person really being inconvenienced or even necessarily knowing that it's happening. It's just kind of quietly going on. The way that you'd mostly know is at the end of it, you'll get a little note from us saying, thank you so much. We've just paid you $50. So we paid you $75 for that time or $20. So the amount of money you can make then on a little battery system like that is not insignificant at all. We've had people make $200 a day when the market is really expensive and really needs our help. So I think that's a definite window into the future, and we're excited about continuing to grow those types of customers. Yeah, and that's really appealing to me specifically, but for all of my customers who are putting in batteries because it really improves the payback on their batteries. I'm going to get some yeah, people to start exactly. signing up. We're- That's right. And we've been talking with a lot of that because this is the upfront cost, as you know, for the battery is a challenge and that you got to finance it or figure out other ways to pay for it. Well, what if letting that your battery be used a few hours a week for this, you know, is worth, you know, another hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a month. That's just an enormous amount towards the cost of your battery system. That's cool. Cool. All right. Well, we talked about the customers, technology, things like that. Who are some of your current partners? Well, look, so you think about our partners are really in two categories. The first is the partners that we sell our reductions in energy to, and that's the utilities and the community choice aggregators for the most part, right? Those are the folks that are buying power to deliver to homes and making sure the lights stay on and billing you for it and all that. So those partners are really critical because they're the ones that have to trust we're going to show up with the power and they're going to pay us to be on standby for when they need us and they're going to pay us when we show up to deliver the energy. So just like a power plant. Today in California, we are about 150 megawatts 
So we look to utilities and CTAs like we're a 150 megawatt power plant, which is, you know, starting to become a really scaled enterprise, something they can really spend some time on and care about. And, and we're going to grow that over the next year about 3x. So that's one side is the utilities and CTAs. The other side are the devices, all the manufacturers and all the equipment and all the folks that make things that we can control. And those are conversations that we're just getting started with. And you can imagine we're calling, basically having this conversation. We're sort of like now the Airbnb of appliances. Airbnb, you, you know, you have your guest cottage. And it turns out with this app, you can make money renting out your guest cottage. You already have the cottage it's sitting there. You're using it, you know, a few weeks a year when your relatives visit. But otherwise, it was empty. And now you can make money on it. Airbnb is, you know, a tool that allowed that to happen. We're sort of doing the same thing, but for people's appliances. Saying, look, you know, you've got sitting in your house, your refrigerator or your hot water heater. And when you're not needing it exactly, can we borrow the power that was going into it and just pause that for a little bit? You won't even notice, but you'll get paid. Everything else is the same. So I think as we now talk, is the Google to the world and everybody else, it's really eye-opening for them to see the fact that this is an enormous, free, unsubsidized stream of revenue to the customers who are already looking to buy their product or might not be able to afford their product otherwise. That's very, very cool. I mean, you're kind of picking up, you know, watts and kilowatts and multiplying until you've got the size of a, a gas power plant. It's super useful. So how did Ohm Connect get started? So obviously I came on more recently. It started about seven years ago and the founders, I think we just lucked out. And I mean, we as in like the world lucked out. Uh, I personally lucked out because now I'm get to be part of this team now and lead this incredible group. But we lucked out that they did not come to this industry, energy policy nerds, right? There's so many great energy policy nerds. I feel like my Twitter feed is essentially 50% of energy policy nerds, and they're my, some of my favorite people. But they cannot design a customer-focused product to save their lives. And we've just seen that over and over again. So what happened here was three people came together that had experience with consumer marketing, consumer engagement, Another one who had been trading energy at a firm that actually traded energy just like firms trade stocks. They were trading energy. And then the last was the chief technology officer from Zynga, the big game maker that did Farmville and some of those things and understood how to build both really interesting games that get people engaged and keep them engaged for a long time. There's a lot of incredible knowledge that comes from that, but also how to build the technology that can scale to millions and millions of users without failing. So here we have sort of three folks, three people came together over the course of just a few months and realized they were all trying to solve the same problem and brought their different skill sets. How do the energy markets work? How do we engage consumers and get them to do things? How do we get in front of consumers and get them to sign up? And it started there. And so by the time I showed up, you know, they'd already learned to do some of the hardest possible things, which is to get consumers at real scale to sign up to do something about energy, to do it over and over and over again, and then how to bundle all those tiny little kilowatts, like you said, into something that's really substantial and meaningful economically. You know, we're going to pay somewhere on the order of $4 million to our customers this year just for saving energy. So, you know, the amount of money starts to become really substantial. And that was possible because they started solving the hardest problems first and worked their way back. So I'm very appreciative of how they came together and, and how we get the benefit from their foresight yeah. into this. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really fascinating combination because, you know, scalability is just so, so important. Just kind of, you know, winding the clock back even farther, how did you get involved in the energy industry? Well, I mean, to agree, this happened, I like to say, Barry, that my first true love was the refrigerator. I was a appointee for President Bill Clinton in the U.S. Department of Energy. And when I was appointed to the Energy Department, it was not my first role in the administration, but it was the one I had the longest. When I got first appointed, the department was working and finalizing some standards for energy efficiency for refrigerators. And, you know, it was seemingly the most boring thing I could imagine. I was a young guy, you know, working in administration, like, oh, refrigerators, yay. But in the process of setting up for this announcement and working through it, 
I got to know just a little bit about refrigerators and the incredible story of the refrigerator, how much bigger and better it is, how much cheaper it is, how much more efficient it is, and the just billions and billions of dollars that we have saved in energy bills simply because we have improved uh, standards for refrigerators. So my first energy moment, I think, realization was there. Like, wow, there's a lot of money and a lot of great stuff that happens quietly under the hood that otherwise, you know, isn't the big sexy thing. It's not the flying car, but it is perhaps more important. And that has really stuck with me all the way through figuring out property that's clean energy, a very similar thing. How do we get people to pay for these things that are economically, you know, solar pays off, but it takes years to do so. How do we make sure everybody can afford to finance that and receive that benefit? And a couple of years ago, as I left my last company and began to work on what was needed, I just really got interested in this notion that it, we have to be able to flex residential demand and we have to do it at huge scale or we can't get to a zero carbon grid in time to save us from the worst of climate change. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so I'm excited to be on the forefront of this. We're doing some really important work here, but it, it really did start for me back in the bowels of the U.S. Department of Energy in D.C. Wow. You hit the nail on the head. We've really got to do a lot more, a lot faster. And at the rate we're going, you know, we're, we're going to have trouble. So I love all these concepts. So how can people get in touch with you at Ohm Connect? Well, look, so if you want to sign up, ohmconnect.com has got you taken care of, straightforward and easy. But I will give your listeners the secret to all startups that they should know, which is almost invariably your email address is your first name at the web address. So Cisco at ownconnect.com <laughs> will find you to the CEO's office, no problem. But you know, I'm more than happy to help anybody out. But obviously, we have a great customer service team that works 24 hours a day on this stuff and want to make sure that people signing up have a good experience. And frankly, at this point, that our get up, get comfortable with all this and get their devices enrolled so that next summer, when we have the next round of energy shortages, we're in an even better place to help keep the lights on in the state than we were this year. All right. That's a terrific, terrific to hear you're at Ohm Connect. And this week I'm going to really get more engaged and try and figure out how to get my solar and storage hooked up. All right. So that's all the time we have on this week's energy show. Thanks Cisco for joining me. And thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in. If you missed any of today's show, you can always go to our website at cinnamon.energy and listen to the podcasts. So, you want to save the world with clean energy? Make money doing it? Confused about the economic and technical realities of residential and commercial solar, batteries, heat pumps, EVs? Want the real-world scoop on new energy technologies, not manufacture hype? Then tune in to the Weekly Energy Show, hosted by Barry Cinnamon. Insights from Barry's 40-plus years in the solar and energy industry will help you understand the future ways we'll generate and consume energy. And now, here's Barry.